Chapter 5. Map and PAR. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will discuss post-synthesis constraints and post-place and route implementation checks for Radiant projects. Chapter 5 consists of seven sections. In the first section of the chapter, Creating Constraints with Device Constraint Editor, we will introduce Radiant's Device Constraint Editor, and how it can be used to create physical constraints for a project's device. In Section 2 of the chapter, Creating PTC Constraints with Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor, Radiant's Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor is introduced, and how it can be used to create timing constraints after synthesis. In Section 3 of Chapter 5, Using Physical Designer, we will discuss Radiant's Physical Designer, and what it can be used for. In the fourth section of the chapter, using Power Calculator, we will discuss Radiant's Power Calculator tool, and how it can be used to calculate the static and dynamic power consumption of a design. In the fifth section of the chapter, using Timing Analyzer, we will discuss Radiant's Timing Analyzer tool, and how it can be used to check a design's timing performance after place and route. In section six of the chapter, using Run Manager, the Run Manager tool will be introduced, as well as how it can be used to run the project flow for multiple implementations in a project. Finally, in the seventh section of this chapter, we will discuss Radiant's ECO Editor tool. Chapter 5, Section 1. Using Device Constraint Editor. In this section of the video series, we will introduce Radiant's Device Constraint Editor, and how it can be used to modify and create physical constraints for a project. As mentioned in the previous chapter of the video series, once a design has completed synthesis, the next step in the constraint creation flow is to create the physical constraints for a design. These physical constraints are used during place and route to determine how a design is implemented on a device. A useful feature of Radiant is that it can be used to generate physical constraints for a design using its device constraint editor tool. One important thing to note is that Radiant's Device Constraint Editor is not the only way to create physical constraints for a device, and that users can also create or import physical constraints if they desire. There are two ways the Device Constraint Editor tool can be launched. The first way is to select its icon from the Radiant toolbar, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. The second way to launch Radiant's Device Constraint Editor is to select tools from Radiant's menu bar and then Device Constraint Editor from the drop-down list of options that appears. Once Device Constraint Editor has opened, users should see something similar to the figure on the slide. The main view of Device Constraint Editor contains a list of all the top-level ports that were synthesized for a design. Each row in this window corresponds to a constraint for a port. The name for a port can be seen in the leftmost column. To set a physical constraint for a port, Set the pin you want to constrain it to using the pin column. To better understand which pins to constrain a port to, refer to the data sheet for the device you plan on programming. As can be seen from the example on the slide, the input port, called start, was constrained to the pin K2. In the main portion of the window is a view of the pins the active device for a project. The exact appearance of the device in this section depends on the active device for a project, so this portion may look different for that reason. A useful feature of the Device Constraint Editor tool is that users can perform design rule checks in order to determine that the constraints they are generating are valid. To perform a design rule check, select the DRC icon from the left side of the window, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. At the bottom of this window are the Device Constraint Editor tabs. Here, users can select a different tab to switch the active view for Device Constraint Editor. In the next slide, we will be discussing Device Constraint Editor's pin tab and what it can be used for. Device Constraint Editor's pin tab contains a list of all the pins in the active device for a project. The various pins in this view are organized depending on the bank they are in. It is important to understand that this tab only contains information about the pins in a device and does not provide any information about what those pins are used for. To view additional information about the pins in a device, refer to the data sheet for the active device for a project. A useful feature of this device constraint editor tab is that it can be used to see which pins have been constrained. As can be seen from the example on the slide, pins that have been constrained will have their signal listed in the signal type column. From the example on the slide, 
it can be seen that the pins H1, H5, and H6, were all constrained to output ports. The device constraint editor's global tab can be seen from the figure on the slide. As can be seen from the example, the global tab contains several settings that can be used to configure how a device operates. Some of these settings include junction temperature. System configuration settings, like whether or not to enable a device's JTAG port. IO Bank VCC settings, as well as global set and reset net configuration. Underneath the global tab figure on the slide, is an example of the device constraint editor's SSO tab. This tab is used to configure some parameters for SSO analysis for a project. As can be seen from the example on the slide, the SSO tab can be used to add ground plane PCB noise, SSO allowance, and power plane PCB noise to a project's output ports. The exact contents of this tab depend on the project, and how it was synthesized. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 5.2, Creating PDC Constraints with Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor.